Um, I am a graduate student in music composition here at the University of Michigan. Um, what that means is that I am sponsored by academia for the study and creation of what is essentially European art music. And I'm very lucky. Um, my music has been performed all around the world, usually for old people. Uh, <laughs> young kids and your Lady Gaga. But, um, <laughs> but it should be known that um, classical music to some extent has always served the interests of the wealthy, the landed, and the old. So, um, in terms of America, we are some of the most musical people in the world. 40% uh, of us play instruments. 88% uh, of us believe that music should be mandatory for all students in schools. And we basically have the church and the military to thank for this. Um, the church, of course, was instrumental in furthering the education of, of singing, uh, four-part harmony, um, chorales, and the military, of course, um, brought bands to every city around, around America. That's why we have band programs um, in, in, public, in our public schools. Now, but the last few years have not been so kind um, to music and to arts programs in general. Um, classical orchestras have been shuttering uh, seasons entirely, if not closing entirely. Um, I don't want to get into the grim details, but the situation is uh, incredibly dire, uh, which is why I sort of want to talk about uh, how, about my own experience for a little while. I spent three years, I know my bio sort of described me as in the most dry way possible, but um, I spent three years as an assistant music teacher in inner city Los Angeles. And at Arbor, we're very, very lucky. We live in one of the safest cities in the world. Um, but in inner city Los Angeles, or even 45 miles that way, um, it's entirely different. Um, absentee fathers, very high crime rate. We couldn't have concerts at the school because the school couldn't afford security at night. So, but it was still really amazing to see how these kids um, came together. I mean, they would play like Herbie Hancock's Watermelon Man. And it wouldn't be like the Los Angeles show or mine, but it'd be really incredible to see these kids collaborate and focus um, in a way they might not do outside of, you know, band class. And this sort of experience took me to the Middle East. Um, I worked as an assistant music, as a music teacher in the al Jati Music School in the West Bank. Um, the al Jati School provides free music education to refugee children in the area. It's really an amazing thing they do. Now, I think when we all think of the Middle East, Beethoven is not the first thing that comes to mind. Um, and I guess this is for several reasons. Um, classical music is a foreign import. It's a Western import. It involves the interaction of boys and girls in all ages on an equal level, basically, except the conductor, ass in front, horns in back. Um, but, um, and so for these reasons, you would sort of expect classical music to receive kind of a cold reaction in, in some conservative or closed areas. And this was the reaction in some places that I saw. But in other places, it's really surprising to see the effect that uh, music can have. And the overall really enthusiastic reaction that classical music has there. And I'd like to show a short film uh, documenting the research I did about um, music schools that have opened recently there. And, how they are moving classical music forward in, in this area. Actually, they just come by, by themselves 
and the most of them at the beginning they just registered uh, without telling the parents that they were registering the Adhemajat, they just came, asking what it was, and said, yeah, you need to learn the Adhemajat. شوي شوي صارت الفكرة إنه إحنا لازم نكون في عندنا مكان يعني نسكن فيه الموسيقى ونسمع فيه ونعمل تدريبات فأخذنا غرفة هيك صغيرة كدار تنظيف وبعدين هذا صرنا نكبروا فيها في البداية كان الناس يفكرون إحنا بنعمل أشياء حرام وأشياء يعني مش منيحة يعني مش تشبهش العادات والتقاليد بطبلوا وزموا وبغنوا وكانوا بيعبدوا الشيطان وكنا نطبل عداف في الليل يصيروا يحكوا عنا انه احنا بنعمل معرض الشيطان فاهم؟ يعني انه هاي ديانه وبنعمل مع الشيطان بعدين صاروا يحكوا لنا هذول الاجانب بيعطوهم مصاري عشان يخربوا المجتمع شوي 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 احنا صمدنا ضلنا صامدين لمده او اربع سنوات يعني لان احنا مآمنين في اللي بنسويه شوي 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 صار الناس تتاكد انه احنا بنشتغل صح وانه هم بحاجه اللي بنسويه فعشان هيك صاروا يحبونا
in building um, a movement of classical music and art uh, in Palestinian society. Uh, I think it's because, I mean, there's a sort of an endless sense of possibility for these people, and I think it's because it's something that's organized generally from the lowest levels of society. People like you and me making a genuine and concerted effort. <laughs> But people like you and me making a really genuine and concerted effort to um, better the lives of our neighbors and our neighbors' children. You know, I tend to be sometimes cynical about what music can do. I mean, obviously I can't make nanotubes with the power of the melody, but um, I believe that what we have to realize collectively is that we have, here in the United States, a really an amazing infrastructure for enriching the lives of ourselves and our neighbors and our community, people like Aga creating amazing sculptures like that out there. And we really have to realize that unlike other places, it's already here. Thank you.